Right. We're going to dive into the show proper and take a look at the indie of the week. Mm. And this week, it's so indie, it doesn't really exist yet. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah. How indie is that? This is like a this is like a, a preview indie, a proto indie. Yeah, yeah, a proto indie of the week. So uh, this comes from um, Daniel Mercy, who a lot of people will know has done rule sets across all manner of different uh, mm. time periods. Mm. Um, I know him particularly from Battle Ravens because that's the game that I I saw and played and very much enjoyed. Uh, but uh, he has managed to set up sort of like a, a one man operation in many regards mm. with some help from outside as well. Uh, called Wiglaf Miniatures. Um, so Wiglaf Miniatures is his new sort of baby that is making um, 18 millimeter, but also one 100 scale mini- uh, miniatures, but also 15 mil, but also just tiny travel size 28 mil. These are all things that he has said. I'm, I'm not making this up. <laughs> Basically kind of like a, yeah, I'm based on miniatures. It doesn't really matter what scale they are uh, for use in playing out historical war games. And the focus at the moment, there you see, you can see it exactly there. Big 15s. I, I like that. I think big 15s is a cool way of, of putting this. That's um, kid's show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the first range of miniatures is actually being produced alongside uh, Mark Copperstone of mm. Copperstone Castings. Right. But a lot of people will know um, I actually painted up some of his um, Lord of the Rings-ish stuff. Yeah. It was very cool. And he is very well known for things like his Barbarian range and everything like that. Does lots of things in very different scales, but awesome miniatures. Um, that talent has been translated over into painting up, well, creating, sorry, these really awesome um, 18 mil metal miniatures for use in sort of creating... Uh, a sort of a, an army of Saxons, effectively, uh, mm-hmm. for use during the Age of Pender, which we'll come to in a little bit. Um, currently, as Jerry was alluding to there, the range isn't actually fully available yet. This is all going to be coming out through North Star. So, um, as you know, North Star will tend to sell a lot of stuff from a whole bunch of different creators, mm-hmm. um, Copplestone being one of them. Uh, and so, obviously, it makes sense that this would translate over into um, uh, their web store at the mo- uh, in. I think it's later this month. I think. Yeah. Um, the, the collection at the moment contains this sort of warlord that you see there at the back with his sort of banner bear and companion. Mm-hmm. You then have a set of unarmored warriors, just seeing there, which are looking very cool. Oh, they're so mm-hmm. awesome. I love the cloaks and everything. It's very nice. They look um, stunning. There's also a set of armored warriors, uh, which you can see a little bit of the back there with their big, big, big helmets on. <laughs> uh, all of them, obviously, armed with spears, as you would imagine. Mm-hmm. It's the easiest weapon to make for the populace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uses the least amount of metal and keeps exactly. the fighting mm. very far away. <laughs> uh, and then you've also got a set of um, light skirmishers yep. um, armed with bows and or javelins, however you want to approach it. Oh. Uh, but this uh, then forms the basis of the um, Age of Pender range and game that we'll go on to in a second. So, but yeah, all these uh, eight, uh, all these 18 mil uh, metal miniature is going to be available very soon. Uh, they've all there's a really fun little sort of section of it of like his blog and stuff where he's talked a little bit more about these, uh, where he goes into like why he decided to do them in the way that he did, why yeah. he chose set arms and armor, why he's gone for like this arrangement of different troops and that kind of thing. Um, so it's all very well researched, as you would have imagined with Mercy uh, diving into this. Yeah. But, uh, I believe there are two warlord models as well. So this one is for Penda. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's some discussion about whether or not that helmet's correct, has been reconstructed correctly. Mm. Uh, but the other one is based on um, Sutton, who so uh, revolved. Yeah. So you, the, even though it is just a s- sort of dark agey Saxon style of, of force, there's a couple of different warlords, so you could have a, a warlord off uh, or throw them up against some Picts or Irish yeah. if you want. Yeah. But these were a set of preview miniatures that went out to... Uh, yes. Mogsy. So he's done the, quite a nice review on his blog very about nice how, he's, how he's put them together. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. And they also match up very well with the Forged in Battle 18s because he's using those for his Welsh. Um, but you can see there the level of detail on the, the sculpts oh, is yeah. really, really nice, good. Yeah. Yeah. Very and much so. I, I see what he means about them being sort of like travel 28 mil <laughs> because the, yeah. it's, you're not dropping detail in the sculpts just because you're dropping scale. Yeah. Um, so it's quite nice. And here we see. That's a really cool idea. I like that, that is nice. He's, he's done a few of these bases, uh, which we'll get onto in a moment when we talk about the actual gameplay for Penda, because it is, 
figure, scale, and basing agnostic in every way, Pretty shape, much, or form. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you've got minis, they will work for this. Uh, it's easier to do something clever. I mean, the fact is Warlord sits in behind that sort of little spear wall. It's quite nice. So cool. or <laughs> left, yeah. off, left off altogether. You can attach your Warlord to units um, in the game, although only one and only at the start. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it's an interesting idea behind it. I do like the fact that on his blog spot, he's got his design notes. He generally includes them in his own games anyway. So you yeah. get an idea of where he's coming from, mm-hmm. what he's doing. Um, and it's it's nice to see the sort of the, the idea behind it. And occasionally we'll see that in the, the rules themselves. Uh, Question. Um so yes. we know we can't get the minis yet. Are the rules available yet? Yes, they are. Yep. Yeah. <gasps> so you can get them via yeah. the medium of War Games Vault. Yeah. Okay. So we we downloaded these to have a look at them and give them a give them a look. They're pr- pretty pretty cheap as well. It's like mm. six, five six quid to get your hands on it, which is pretty awesome. Nice. Uh, but it's a digital version of the rules, which kind of goes into detail of how to play the game. So um, if anyone, I mentioned Battle Ravens earlier. That kind of gives you a basis for the mm. the way that this plays out. So this doesn't play out like a typical tabletop war game in that right. it uses uh it's not sort of free movement in that regard it uses mm. uh like a gridded landscape so you'd lay this over, over over the top of your terrain or you'd work it into or this would just be a mat in, in of itself if you wanted to design it you could also use like markers if you wanted to mark out yeah. the different areas of it there's a whole bunch of different things you can yeah. do in order to get that sort of look to the battlefield mm-hmm. But this then allows you to play out a game which is a lot more about um, command and control yeah. than it is about sort of individual heroics or, or one unit sort of rushing out and doing like the most impressive things and that kind of thing. And as Jerry was saying, it's very much one of those things where the general is sitting back almost and kind of looking out over the battlefield and directing the flow of the battle, which I think is really nice. Um the other thing that kind of flows into this game as well quite nicely, and it's something that I think a lot of people really enjoy about um, Saga in particular, is this idea of having like a separate area of the game to play like a almost like a mini game. Mm. So that's why you have this tactics board that you're seeing here. So this enables you to, you effectively decide what you're going to do using this, and then that all plots out and plays out on the battlefield after, you, after you've done it, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's um, great. And the interesting thing about this, unlike Saga, where you have your own battle board and you make your own plans and decisions. Mm-hmm. Whoever has the initiative, you you generate tactics tokens. If you lose your general, because um, you were careless, then you lose a tactics token, which means you could be at a sort of deficit to your opponent. Um, there are obviously limits to amount of units and that sort of thing. There is a point system, but it's all very, I don't want to say generic, it's not granular. It, he doesn't care if that unit has leather armor or that unit has mail or that unit has broad spears or boar spears or javelins. It's it's not that type of game. It's about the command and control. And if you've both got four tactics tokens and Ben has initiative, Ben chooses where he's going to put the first token. And he may go, sod you. <laughs> I've got no shooting. You have shooting. I'm going to place one of the shooting, uh, tag, or I'm going to place one of my tactic tokens on shooting. Uh, and if you're playing something like a Pict or Welsh Army or Strathclyde Welsh, who are all about hit and run, and you've got a lot of shooting and javelins in your force, you want to have both sh- options because you don't have enough ground troops to deal with your opponent. And if your opponent can suddenly take one of them away, yes, it means you're not going to get to move what you want to move in your own turn, but you're depriving your opponent so yeah. you both fill this with your tactics tokens and the as much about the denial as it is about choosing yeah. what you want to do which is really cool yeah and and i really i really like that um yeah going back to the 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 battle board so i suppose we talk very briefly about the, the sort of the gameplay style there's a points value so unlike dbx systems where you have a set number of elements per side um you have a bit of less building in this so you could be sitting with somewhere between sort of six to 15 elements in your force uh you can only ever have three of your own units three of your own elements in a single square 
uh, and then your opponent can have a max of three. So you're never going to have more than six in there. And that's how the gameplay works then. So when you move, you, or if you shoot or you attack, whatever it happens to be from the tactics board, you pick an area. So you go this square in the middle, the units that are in there are going to move, but they can move wherever they want adjacent to. So you could split them one into each of the ones to the front and keep one back to use as a reserve to try and block off your opponent, um, things like that. So it's, it is about the grand scale yeah. uh, of the tactics. Um, your, your warlord attaches to a unit at the start and then stays with that unit. Uh, so it makes them better. But if you lose that unit, then you lose your warlord and you lose a tactics <sighs> token. And so protecting your warlord is, is obviously key. But at the same time, he's generally going to be with his mates, like a bunch of Huskarls or, or elite warriors of some description. So keeping him away from the fighting is probably a bad idea as well because you're denying yourself one of your better units it's it's a really it's a really simple yeah elegant system yeah yeah like the, the like the, the way that stuff's dealt in terms of damage and that thing is very simple so sort of like hits are on fours or whatever saves are on fives and then every unit then has as you can see there what's called the battle rating yeah so that indicates sort of like their health Quality. whilst also being their quality yeah. and also their morale so it and, and that is what's taken down so it's just one stat in that mm. respect that then is removed and once that goes down to zero obviously the unit routes and leaves the battlefield so it's a really fascinating one and uh, there are ways for things to go up and down and obviously there's all the special abilities that you can see there as well which are also designed for age of pender and playing out this particular period of history mm -hmm. but i think what's quite nice about this is that it allows Mercy to almost take this formula as he has absolutely done, and translate it to different periods of history and play around with it as well. So you can use the same things like the tactics board and that gridded layout, then just come up with different special abilities that would apply, you know, specifically to Anglo Saxons or to Vikings yeah. and build up on that if you wanted to. Obviously, you can have things, you can have obviously lots of interesting battles between factions of the same type fighting out the tabletop, which is pretty cool. But you could then move that into medieval and all sorts of things later on down the line, which is cool. Um but yeah, so as well as them working on that kind of Anglo-Saxon period and, and working on those things, there's also plans to do a lot more stuff in the future as well. So they've already been talking about making miniatures um, for Irish, for mm. Welsh, uh, and Vikings of a, of a style, which is pretty cool. Mm. So there's going to be some sort of like early Vikings in there, which would be quite nice. I, I uh, I, maybe it's just me. I really like what they're doing with the Irish. Um, they've based it off a slightly later period based off the illustrations from the book of kells yeah yeah mm -hmm. but irish hit irish hit the peak of perfection around 400 <laughs> uh, and then just stayed like that until about the 1800s Most. <laughs> you know you can't move on perfection so it's, it doesn't really matter um that they've gone for a slightly later period because it would still work for the the you know early dark ages middle ages yeah. or, you know they work all the way through to elizabethan let's face it so um yeah I'm, I'm fascinated to see what else comes along um when they they actually start to to ramp up and get the the miniatures out there because the certainly the ones they've shown off so far are excellent and apparently they are scaled to marks it's the, it's his barbarian range that i want to say, I want to say it's barbaric, 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 barbaric yeah. yeah uh where i have some of those kicking around somewhere <laughs> I know nobody is shocked at that, but I do. Um, Somewhere. So, so we haven't, yeah, uh, I think I know exactly where they are. Um, but they're mostly trolls and ogres and things. But it means then I can, you know, potentially do some sort of uh, uh, Beowulf-esque Grendel type that scenario cool. for mm. my own personal amusement. I mean, it's called Viglaf Miniatures. You, you know, you Viglaf really... is the, the second-hand man of, uh, of Beowulf, so yeah. Yeah, he, he's the man who uh, who took over when... when yeah. Beowulf uh, shuffled off this mortal coil. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers for, team, ain't for the best ain't for you know. Yes. If you ain't seen it by now, it's your own fault. Oh, <laughs> I know. If, yeah. It's a hard read, uh, especially because I didn't do anything clever like literature. Um, but I've got Tolkien's version, which is actually very good. So, so there. there was yeah. actually a good version of it filmed. Um, Gerard Butler. The Gerard Butler one, yeah, yeah. It's a very if you Beowulf and Grendel is the name. It is and quite yeah, good. It's, that it's not it's not a hundred percent as accurate as it could be, but it comes much closer than a lot of the other ones, including including the Ray Winston version, 
Yeah. Grendel. Oh, oh. Grendel, I d- you slay. I deleted that okay. from my brain. I really deleted the fact <laughs> that, that that was a thing. Wow. Oh, no, big gold covered Angelina range. Jolie. Uh, yeah. So. yeah, it was, ju- it was just oh, terrible. No, I remember, so don't oh that. God, I, it took me a little longer to reboot it. Oh God. <laughs> Might me forget. Uh, anyway. uh, <laughs> I was going to say something. Like, oh yeah, that Beowulf and Grendel film, by the way, has an amazing documentary that was made at the time. That's the how film, I found out about it. I'd never the seen film, the film. It, the film was basically cursed. Like they, they, they swore that the gods didn't want them to make the film because things would slow <laughs> down, people would get ill, all sorts of different things. The, the, that is almost worth watching as much as the well, the even probably I, more so than I, the film. Well, that's so. that's how I found the film. I seen the documentary first. They brought a, <laughs> they brought like a because they filmed it in Iceland and yeah. they brought a druid in to bless the production and the day after he left they got hit by like a volcano and the worst storms they'd ever yeah. seen ever and it just all went downhill from there it's just like this is amazing and everyone was convinced that the, the druid had never wanted them to do it in the first place yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the says, druid what? was a charlatan just and the guy's like no that's fake you're all fake it's all burns <laughs> But they, they did say to them maybe you shouldn't film a, a, a film in Iceland in the middle of the winter but well there. yeah there's that yeah, but um, Who going, back, going back to Wig, to Wiglaf Miniatures as, uh, just for a second as well, mm. um, they have said that everything that's made money-wise from the side of the miniatures and the rules, so obviously you can buy the rules now and just use whatever you want to play, but all of that money is going to go directly mm. back into creating more miniatures for this. So that's... if you want to see more of this pop up, if you want to see the Irish and the Welsh and, and all the rest of the things they're working on, maybe then develop it into different periods and that kind of thing. Definitely want to go out uh, and check these out when they appear on North Star and buy the rules yourself and give it a go with what you've got lying around because um, yeah. I think it's a really fun little rule set that uh, deserves some attention um, and it, it's from it's from somebody who obviously knows what they're doing when it comes to mechanics and stuff. So oh god, yeah, it's it's, it's an old I think of it as an old school a classic rule set. I've got things yes. like Clash of Shields and stuff, which they're black and white. There's no fancy pictures in it. He said there might be in time if people want it, but it's a very short 30 page rule set. Yeah. Um, people know what miniatures look like. We've all seen what miniatures look like. You can imagine <laughs> what your miniatures will look like if you're trying to play yeah. this game out, but you don't need all of that fluff upping the page count and upping the price. Uh, um, it's like just mecha- a, a yeah. mechanically clean and bare bones rule set. Just which allows, them to, which allows them to keep the page count down like that. Yeah. Like you can read the rules and you'd be like, oh, I know exactly what's happening. Like, yeah. e- even if you don't want to read the, the full breakdown of how everything contextually works, there's like three or four pages at the back that once you read that, you'll be like, well, I, I know how to play. So yeah. it, it's very good. It's very, very well put together. So no, I'm watch out for that. And 100% mm. on board with that. I must reach out and see if I can talk to Dan um, because his very work has been, you. his work has been fantastic over the years. I own a frightening amount of it. In fact, the Zulu. <laughs> my, my Rourke frightening Strif- amount of everything. Yeah, well, the, but the Rourke Strift game is actually based on um, one of his systems. Oh, wow. Uh, so I, the I Who Would it, Be Kings, then, is it? It's The Men Who Would Be Kings, and then I, yeah. I tweaked it for uh, the, the defense. So, I mean, you know, I'm on board. So <laughs> you should be as well, people. He's That's a Merseyite. There we go. Well, yeah, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Also, Liverpool fans. So both, both <laughs> it's all and there. connected. It's everything. This yeah. is how we all work out that we're brains in a jar based on my love of Dan Mersey and Liverpool. <laughs> right. That's enough of the end of the week. We shall be right back after this swish with the news. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.